Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, my name is Dennis. So today we're going to review the ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. So we're going to get it out of the box, we're going to have a look at everything that comes with it, and uh, just see how it is. One thing I know for sure is I checked it all out, made sure it has all the important features to me, and I'll point those out to you right now. Here we go. Okay, so here's our box. We're going to get it open and see what comes inside. I like I like Asus motherboards. Their boxing is usually kind of kind of nice actually cuz they always tuck away all kinds of goodies. So let's see what we get in here. Okay, so this is our antenna. We'll set on top. We'll have a better look at that in a minute. That's the only thing that's in there. And let's get our motherboard out and see what it looks like. Now I know you can't see that very well, but don't worry, we're going to get it out of the packaging here in a minute and go over everything. But what else comes in the box? Let's have a look. So that's it for there. Let's get this out of here. Considering the price of this, I am nice. To, I am happy to see that it, it, it's kind of, you know, they've done a little more detail than just a plain um, stainless steel that's kind of ugly. You got your M.2 screws, okay, different screw and the little part that goes on the motherboard sometimes you don't even need it i don't even know what this is this is for use single-sided m.2 ssds stick this pad onto the existing m.2 pad all right well that's kind of cool i've never seen that before interesting always coming up with new stuff the uh sata cables and you have a certificate of reliability which is always kind of neat your user guide which also includes some more stickers. They like to include lots of stickers. And of course, the DVD for all the drivers and chipset and all that kind of good stuff. Now, keep in mind, once you've used that, or don't use it, depends on how you want to do it, uh, you should go online later on and update the most up-to-date drivers. All right, so we have specification, update notification on the motherboard itself, and in a couple of different languages and technical updates so always go and have a look at that you never know what they're trying to tell you and that's it so let's get on to the actual motherboard so here's our motherboard out of the box go over its features which of course one thing i don't like is the fan b550 can get rid of the fan why can't the xy70 of course we have our four memory slots here you can see that the ones that you're going to use slots two and four are grayed out or they're actually in gray so that helps you to figure out if you're in question what slots to put memory in now another thing about the memory of course is your four dims here uh, has a max of 128 gigabyte of ddr4 4400 overclock unbuffered memory and running in dual channel memory okay so always a nice thing to know i know a lot of people are pretty concerned over that and uh of course, for memory for it, you're going to have to refer to the uh, memory queue VL or qualified vendors li uh, list to find out which memory works with it. Most of it's going to. It's pretty standard today. Uh, it's been around long enough that that should not be an issue anymore. And of course, as I mentioned, it has the uh, chipset. It's the AMD X570. And the CPU uh, socket here, it's an AM4 for 3 and 2nd gen AMD Ryzen 3rd, th 2nd, and even 1st gen processors uh, and with Radeon graphics processors now it does mention nowhere because usually they will mention uh, whether it can accommodate some of the other uh, CPUs like a 3200 or 3400G or something like that I have no indication that that's the case so if you find that let me know I'll put it in the description for other people if they're looking at this video down the road couple other features of this board, of course, are the M.2 slots. So you have one here and you have another one underneath here. I don't know why they've decided to put the second one covered and the first one not. Maybe it's because of heat dissipation. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you uh, know why they're just doing that now. It used to be this one was covered, had the thermal pad to take off the little piece of plastic, put it back on and that kept it cool. Maybe they just decided it works better if it's just exposed to the air 
from the system and that keeps it cooler or not. So something else I want to go to now is the expansion slots. So you've got one PCIe 4.0, a backwards compatible 3.0 times 16 mode. And of course you have another one here, uh, PCIe 4.0 times 16 mode at times four mode. And you also have two, okay, right here, PCIe 4.0 times one. So that's that's new. I'm not sure if I've seen a motherboard with that on it recently, or at least maybe one of the ones that I've had. Another thing good to know on this, it has the BIOS flashback, uh, has supports PCIe Gen 4, PCIe 4.0 ready. And the most important thing is it comes out of the box, uh, check your box, of course, but it says AMD Ryzen 5000 desktop ready. So any 5000 series CPUs should work out of the box. So having a, another look on the bottom, of course you've got your holes for your standoff screws, things like that. But of course this is where your 24 pin for power is going to go. You have a USB type C connector, which I always find, I like to have that. Because I try to find cases that also have that. So taking advantage of that on the motherboard allows you to take advantage of it on a case. And I just, I just like to have USB type C nowadays. Um, the other thing I want to point out is you have four here, four LED lights. So they're going to go through the standard checking for VGA, your memory, all that kind of good stuff. And each one will light up. And if you have a CPU problem, memory problem, it's going to help you to identify any problems with the motherboard at that point before booting up or maybe after even. So that is something I ran into with a video I did a little bit back. And it helped me to identify the fact that the memory, there was an issue. And in fact, two of the slots weren't working anymore. So, got to keep that in mind. It's very important. Of course, this is uh, apparently works with a Aura Sync, so this lights up. So one of the things it does have is only four SATA connectors. Now, in the past, you usually try to get six. But nowadays, with M.2s, you don't really need as many. So that's probably why they've gone down to four. Okay, so I mentioned they only have four, but then I noticed if you look at the other side of the board, you've got four more sitting here. All right, so that's a different direction. Um, and sometimes that's pretty handy. So in actual fact, you've got eight uh, SATA ports. Now we're going to go right to left. We're going to identify everything that's on here. So of course, these are all your front panel connectors for you, depending on your case. Uh, it'll depend on which ones of these you're going to use. A lot of times you don't use the speaker. There's no speaker cable that comes with it. So you, you used to be able to listen to the LED codes, but nowadays uh, the lights will show up, like the LED lights I was mentioning, and that will kind of give it to you anyway. Uh, you have a channel fan here, USB 3.1. Uh, you have a USB, two USB slots here, which is always good to have, see at least two. Another channel fan three, your clear CMOS, your COM debug, which I don't even know what you use that for. Uh, another, now this is, I believe, a COM port. Not to be mistaken for USB. It looks very similar, and I've actually made that mistake in the past. So that, that is a COM port. Not very often used anymore, but, you know, it's just, it's there. So go back to this. This is a debug CLRTC. Okay, just to point that out, uh, to correct that. Uh, this is where your audio is going to come from. So you're going to plug your cable from your case in here. And of course, we have our uh, audio um, capacitors. That's, it's all sectioned off, okay? Which helps to eliminate pops and hisses and all that kind of feedback that you might get. Which, of course, is nice. You have your, your um, our CR2032 battery, okay? Usually for 5 volt. I believe it's 5 volt. Yep, 5 volt. And uh, it's just there. And sometimes that can save you if you have to reset the CMOS. You can pop that battery out. Sometimes you need to, even if you have the little jumpers. Um, that just might be the thing that helps save the day. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I had a motherboard that uh, the BIOS did not work when I flashed it. And I thought the BIOS, BIOS was completely, like motherboard was gone. But I seen somebody say, try popping it out, wait a full five minutes, put it back in and see what happens. And that actually worked for me. So just something to keep in mind. So let's go on to another side of the board here. So pointing to this again for your audio capacitors, I do want to point out a few more features just to let you know that it has the exclusive 
Realtek S1200A 8-channel high-definition audio codec, codec. I'll get it right here. Exclusive DTS custom for gaming headsets. Audio shielding, which is I just pointed out. Uh, dedicated audio PCB layers, which will help will separate your left and right channels to guard quality and the clarity of your signals and how well it sounds. These are premium Japanese audio capacitors, just so you're aware of what these actually are. Okay, it supports jack detection, the front panel jack retasking. So when you plug things in and out, it's going to say, it's going to recognize that's what you're doing immediately and just going to work. Has an audio cover, so shielding preserves the integrity of the signals. They like to reiterate some things, but I just like to point them out just so I don't miss anything. So let's move on to the other side, the motherboard over here, and focus on the things that matter right here. So when you're looking at the back, sometimes it's not easy to tell what it is. So what you can do, if you want to figure it out real easy, just take your I.O. shield. Now, this is in the case where, of course, it doesn't come pre-installed already and it's got all your labels already on here so you want to identify which port is your BIOS flashback port it's going to show you right here because it's all circled see that line that goes around it to help you better identify it so anyway we're going to go that's our BIOS flashback button that works when you have this plugged in and you're updating your BIOS but let's go on and start uh, and go over all what we got so we have our ps2 mouse keyboard combo port you have your usb uh, 3.2 gen 1 type a ports you have your display port your hdmi you have your usb type c and a couple more uh, another usb now when you're not doing the bias flashback this does work as just a normal usb okay so just keep that in mind and usb 3.2 all right move over we have our antennas where they're going to go and we have our audio so let's go back to this first so we have our intel LAN. so it's a 1225v 2.5 gigabyte ethernet port uh you have usb uh type well hang on you have two more usbs here which are usb this is our usb 3.2 gen 2 type a ports all right basically usb 2.0 from everything oh no they're not no, see, there's a, a more bluish color to it. If I hold it like that, so let me take that off. Just so you can see. So this is USB 3.2 Gen 2. Okay, so you have your audio ports here, which has your optical spiffed out and audio jacks. So that pretty much covers this. Okay, so moving on to this side of the board. So you've got four pins here. So when you're looking at your motherboard, if you don't know which one is your RGB and addressable RGB, it's got four pins. That means it's four pin, 12 volt RGB header. All right. So moving on, we have another uh, system fan header and a CPU where your CPU uh, fan is going to plug in there. A couple more capacitors. You have an eight pin and a four pin for power. So this board is overclockable. Keep that in mind just in case that's something that uh, you want to do. Gigantic heat sink, heat sink. So your VRMs should be quite good on this but of course i haven't tested it so i can't confirm that so just to point out okay so that was the rgb header this is a addressable rgb so yeah you have only three pins and then this one is missing so this is a five volt addressable rgb header the five volt uh setting is usually on your left hand side so keep that in mind and you also have another one tucked away over here so that's an rgb header as well let me just show you that real quick quick right here so you have two rgb headers and one addressable rgb header so a couple more things i may not have passed up or pointed out is you have your channel fan one or AIO, aio so water cooling pump header okay and you have another uh, fan header here uh, this here on both sides if you're using the stock cooler for emd that helps you to bracket uh, to hold it in place sometimes you don't need those depending on the type of cooler it is and you'll have to remove those just by taking these screws out on both sides. Okay, so one thing I want to point out as well is this right here is your trusted platform. So if you had a USB 2.0 um, TPM module, you could put it in there. If you want to put a physical trusted platform module in that slot, but you can obviously work without it. Uh, I've done videos on 
how to activate your TPM module, um, software based through the BIOS, and it will work for Windows 11 if that's what your interest is. Um, and of course, there's other steps, but you can watch the video for that. So I just wanted to point that out that does have it if you want it, if it's something you're interested in. So showing you the back of the motherboard, you can see where all the trace lines are. Okay, so it comes down here on the left hand side, which is probably your audio, I believe, on the other side. This is a back plate. This will come off depending on which motherboard uh, CPU um, cooler you're going to put on this motherboard. So if you have a CPU cooler aftermarket, it may or may not require this. It may have a different bracket all on its own. So just give you a quick look on all that. And of course, ending off with a very sweet looking motherboard. Okay, so a couple more things I wanted to just quickly go over. Um, I'll read it right from the manual, just so you know. So I want to point out the fact that it is Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX200. Okay, so 2x2 two two Wi-Fi 6. 802.11 all the way up from A to AX. Okay, so that pretty much covers everything. I don't think I missed anything. If I did, ask me in the comments and I'll get back to you. Um, if you like the video, hit that like. If you don't, you know what to do. Uh, leave me a comment if you have questions, of course. Uh, if you're new here, think about subscribing. Hit that join button to support the channel if you're able to. Uh, or if you don't, no big deal. Um, but it does help. And uh, hit that notification bell. And that will show you videos as they come up in the future so you don't miss anything. All right. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the new year.